Hi everyone, and welcome to Return to the River, a program about life along the banks of the historic Hudson River Valley. I'm your host, Chris Bowser. In 1986, a local TV show called On the River was produced by what was then WTZA, Channel 62 in Kingston, New York. The show documented life along the river and covered such topics as industrial polluters, the sloop Clearwater, the state of recreation and commercial fishing, and waterfront preservation and development. In all, 153 episodes were produced. Today, through the generous donation of its original producers, the shows reside in the Marist College archives and special collections. The concept of Return to the River is to revisit many of the topics covered by the original series and to see how life along the Hudson has changed over the last 25 years, what policies helped in its preservation, and what work still needs to be done. We'll take a look at everything, from the variety of fish that inhabit its waters to the numerous historic landmarks that line its banks. The Hudson River is one of the most unique and diverse bodies of water in the world, and we still have much to learn about it. So I hope you'll join us for Return to the River. We are here on the Fallkill Creek in Poughkeepsie on a beautiful early May day, witnessing one of the great local migrations here in the Hudson Valley. In the creek next to me, we're seeing hundreds of tiny glass eels that were born a year ago in the Sargasso Sea migrating upstream. And at the same time, we're seeing adult river herring that are coming into the Fallkill Creek to lay their eggs and start a whole new generation going on. Best of all, we've got lots of local students and teachers and volunteers that are engaged in studying these wonderful migrations going on all around us this time of year. All sorts of delicious fish. Sturgeon, bass, perhaps. Maybe herring? You guys have seen the herring in the creek. This is a hot time to be fishing on the river. Why don't we go one, one, two, three, four, five, since we have two mops, we can get them rolling along. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. Can you guys get started on the net? My name is Jessica. I'm a student at Kipsy High School. This is my senior year. And this is my third year doing the deal project. Well, the first step is to unpack the net. And then we, what we like to do is um, open it up. Um, and take a look at the inside around the edge of the circle of the net to see how many eels we have. Just taking out the eels, the eels feel really slippery in your hands, so you have to be really careful to get them out and don't drop them. I like everything about it. It's, um, it's a fun experience. It's a really beautiful experience because you get to be in the water. Like, really, you feel really close to nature. Learning about these amazing eels and doing something that is different, it's out of the routine, it's, it's really fun. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go over how to weigh glass eels for the Hudson River Eel Project. Um, when we weigh eels for our research, we always weigh 20 glass eels. Those are the, the very recent eels that have just migrated in from the ocean. We don't weigh elvers or other fish or other animals, just 20 glass eels. You guys have counted out 20 glass eels, exactly 20. Sarai, why don't you take this yellow cloth here and make a nice little cup with your hands, all right? Jessica, why don't you hold that net and I'm going to pour these 20 eels through the net. You got it? Yep. Excellent. All righty. Now, what I want you to do is put those 20 eels into Sarai's little cup there. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You can, yeah, you can plop them right on in there. Now, it's a little bit weird because we're taking eels out of the water. But the good thing about eels is as long as their skin is damp, they continue to absorb oxygen. So they're actually a lot more rugged than you might think. They're going to be okay as long as we move along, you know, at a fairly good pace, which is exactly what we're doing. Because Joe, can you and Soraya get these eels into this cup? As carefully as you can. Yeah, you might need to do a little scoop action there. 
sometimes what works is to go like this, right? And then there you go. Now you have a nice little shoot. And you can go ahead, Joe, and guide those eels in there. Looking good. It's okay if they stick to the side of the cup. Looking good. Okay. Now, Joe, go ahead and put that cup right on the scale. Excellent. Now, according to our scale, what do 20 glass eels weigh? 3.6 grams. So even though this scale, this scale isn't accurate or precise enough to measure only one eel because they weigh so little, every time we come out we weigh 20 eels so at least we collect some data. So 20 glass eels weigh 3.6 grams. What should we do with these eels now? Put them in a bag. Put them in a bag or at least get them to water. <laughs> back in the water. My favorite part about the Eel Project is not the eels at all. It's actually the students, uh, college students, high school students, middle school sometimes, elementary school, uh, people who work for the Parks Department, uh, people who work for the museum. We have a pretty good diverse group of people who participate in the project. Because it's a fun learning experience and it's uh, great to be out in the creek and have fun with all my friends. Uh, I've learned that the Falco Creek is a lot bigger than I thought. It's got more than just eels. It's got herring, it's got catfish, it's got scuds, <laughs> and uh, it's got a bunch of algae too, which is great. It's awesome. The part that I enjoy most about the eel project is getting outside. Um, it's basically a break from schoolwork. Just enjoying nature, um, getting to see the, the little eels that are in the net. I didn't even know that there was stuff that lived in the Hudson River. Um, so it's really interesting to see how the eels go from little glass eels like that small to big elvers. Um, and even silver eels after that. So, Hi, I'm Bowser. And I'm Jessica. And we're here at the Falk Hill Creek in Poughkeepsie, where we have just found a couple of interesting uh, little pieces of nature right here in the, the tidal mouth of where the Falk Hill meets the Hudson River estuary. Now, uh, Jessica, do you feel comfortable picking that up? Yeah, sure. OK, great. You, you can just grab it right at the end of its thorax there. Oh, nice. Take Check that out. Can everybody see that? This is a crayfish. Now, Jessica, if you look really closely at the sides of the head of that crayfish, or even touch it right behind its eyeball, oh. can you feel the little spines that are on the side of its head? Oh, yeah, you can feel it. So that makes this, uh, that helps us know that this is a spiny-cheeked crayfish. That's a native species of crayfish uh, here in the, the Hudson Valley. Oh, look at that. We will sometimes find a different non-native species of crayfish called the rusty crayfish. Now also in our eel mop, and I'll pick this one up, we also found, look at this beautiful elver. This is a, a juvenile eel that's maybe, maybe two years old. Look at that. Now when this elver gets a little bit bigger, it's interesting because there's been a lot of studies that have shown that elvers actually can compete for space and habitat and maybe even food with the non-native rusty crayfish, but there's not so much evidence of competition with the native spiny-cheeked crayfish, which means that in nature, these two species sort of get along next to each other in the creek, whereas with the non-native species, not so much. All right. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. All right. Hi, I'm Jonathan Clementi. I'm a freshman environmental science major here at Marist College. Right now we're working with the eel mops. Basically the glass eels like to hide in little crevices and dark areas, and these mops are perfect for that. So what we're doing is just enticing the eels to come out of the, the net by dunking them in the water. And then once we get them out of the net, we throw the net back into the stream so that they can, or more eels will come back and then we collect the eels in uh, a net over there. We can put this right down here if we want. Hey, check this out. Because this type of fish, unlike eels, which are kind of rugged and they can breathe through their skin out of water for a little bit, herring do not have such skills. So what I'm gonna Sorry. just do is just scoop this out for one second. Look at this, I'm gonna use both hands, nice and wet. Look at this beautiful fish. Nice. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? There are lots and lots of tiny round eggs floating in the water. 
So what we have is right now in Fall Kill Creek, hundreds, maybe thousands of these herring are coming up here. They're spawning. And who knows, a few weeks from now, there may be thousands, even millions of tiny baby herring out in the Hudson River, starting a whole new life cycle. Hooray!